IoT Network Configurations, IoT LAN, IoT WAN, IoT Node, IoT Gateway, IoT Proxy. IoT, Internet of Things, networks can be configured in a variety of ways, depending on the specific application requirements and the physical constraints of the environment. Here are some common configurations and components of an IoT network. 1. IoT LAN, Local Area Network. This is a network that connects IoT devices within a limited physical area, such as a home, office, or factory. 1. In an IoT LAN, devices typically communicate using Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or Zigbee protocols. 2. IoT WAN, Wide Area Network. This is a network that connects IoT devices across larger geographical areas, such as cities, countries, or even continents. 2. In an IoT WAN, devices typically communicate using cellular or satellite networks. 3. IoT Node. This is a device or sensor that is part of an IoT network and is capable of collecting and transmitting data. 3. Examples of IoT nodes include smart sensors, smart meters, and connected appliances. 4. IoT Gateway. This is a device that acts as a bridge between the IoT nodes and the cloud or other back-end systems. 4. The gateway can perform data filtering, aggregation, and pre-processing before transmitting the data to the cloud. 4. The gateway can also provide security and manageability features for the IoT network. 5. IoT Proxy. This is a device that acts as a middleman between the IoT nodes and the cloud or other back-end systems. 5. The proxy can provide caching, load balancing, and other performance optimization features for the IoT network. IoT Network Configurations IoT LAN, IoT WAN, IoT Node, IoT Gateway, IoT Proxy IoT, Internet of Things, networks can be configured in a variety of ways, depending on the specific application requirements and the physical constraints of the environment. Here are some common configurations and components of an IoT network. 1. IoT LAN, Local Area Network. This is a type of network that connects IoT devices within a limited physical area, such as a home, office, or factory. 1. In an IoT LAN, devices typically communicate using Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or Zigbee protocols. 1. Wi-Fi is a popular choice for IoT LANs because it provides high bandwidth and a wide range of coverage. 1. Bluetooth is another popular protocol for IoT LANs because it is low power and can be used to connect to smartphones and other devices. 1. Zigbee is a low-power wireless protocol that is designed for low data rate applications, such as smart home automation and industrial control. 2. IoT WAN, Wide Area Network. This is a type of network that connects IoT devices across larger geographical areas, such as cities, countries, or even continents. 2. In an IoT WAN, devices typically communicate using cellular or satellite networks. 2. Cellular networks, such as 3G, 4G, and 5G, provide high-speed data transfer and wide coverage, making them suitable for IoT applications that require real-time data and remote monitoring. 2. Satellite networks are another option for IoT WANs, especially for applications that require coverage in remote or isolated areas. 3. IoT Node. This is a device or sensor that is part of an IoT network and is capable of collecting and transmitting data. 3. Examples of IoT nodes include smart sensors, smart meters, and connected appliances. 3. IoT nodes can be powered by batteries, solar panels, or other power sources, depending on the specific application requirements. 3. They can also communicate using a variety of wireless protocols, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, or LoRaWAN. 4. IoT Gateway. This is a device that acts as a bridge between the IoT nodes and the cloud or other back-end systems. 4. The Gateway can perform data filtering, aggregation, and pre-processing before transmitting the data to the cloud. 4. The Gateway can also provide security and manageability features for the IoT network. 
4. IoT gateways can be either hardware or software based, and can be deployed on premises or in the cloud. 5. IoT proxy. This is a device that acts as a middleman between the IoT nodes and the cloud or other backend systems. 5. The proxy can provide caching, load balancing, and other performance optimization features for the IoT network. 5. IoT proxies can be either hardware or software based, and can be deployed on premises or in the cloud. Basic microcontrollers and interfacing. Sure, I'd be happy to provide a review of basic microcontrollers and interfacing. Microcontrollers are small, self-contained computer systems that are designed to control devices or perform specific tasks. They typically include a CPU, memory, and input-output (I/O) peripherals, all on a single chip. Microcontrollers are used in a wide range of applications, including robotics, automation, and consumer electronics. One of the key features of microcontrollers is their ability to interface with other electronic components and devices. This allows them to control motors, read sensors, and interact with other hardware components. To interface with other components, microcontrollers typically use digital I.O. pins, analog-to-digital converters, ADCs, and serial communication protocols. Digital I.O. pins can be configured as inputs or outputs, and can be used to control LEDs, relays, and other digital devices. ADCs are used to convert analog signals, such as those from temperature sensors or potentiometers, into digital signals that can be processed by the microcontroller. Serial communication protocols, such as SPI, I2C, and UART, allow the microcontroller to communicate with other devices, such as displays, sensors, and wireless modules. In order to program a microcontroller, a programmer or development board is typically used. The programmer or board is connected to the microcontroller and allows the user to write code, upload it to the microcontroller, and debug it. Development boards often include additional components, such as LEDs, buttons, and sensors, which can be used to test and experiment with different applications. Overall, microcontrollers and interfacing are an essential part of modern electronics and can be used to create a wide range of devices and applications. As with any technology, there is a learning curve involved in getting started with microcontrollers, but there are many resources available online and in print to help beginners get started.